Dear students, in this video, we will solve the next problem on the Petrick method. This is a three variable problem. These are the mid terms given. So, you all know first part how to go with. Just Quinn McCluskey method, follow the same procedure. Once you find out all essential prime implicants, then find out with the Petrick method to find out number of solutions possible and the minimum. Uh, SOP forms how many solutions of minimum SOP form so that is the question now start doing this so first represent all this in terms of the binary and then group it based on the number of ones it's been done this is a zero the single one these two then these are two double ones and then this so the group here doesn't looks proper please do make it like this this is the first group these two things will come in the second group and these two will come in the third group so like this you make a group then start comparison so this 0 minus 1 it is minus 1 it is possible 0 minus 1 so 0 1 0 0 dash then put a tick for these two Next, 0, you compare with 2, it is minus 2. Yes, 0 minus 2, it is minus 2. 0, 2, middle bit is changing. Yes, done. Next, 0 compared with these, it's done. This is the first item, right? This, you just make it as a separate group. This is the content, done. Now you compare 1 with 5. 1 with 5. So, when I compare this 1 minus 5, it is minus 4, it is possible. The first bit is changing, that is dash 0, 1. Yes, it's been done. Next, 1 minus 6, it is minus 5, it is not possible. Then 2 minus 5, minus 3, it is not possible. 2 minus 6, minus 4, it is possible. So, first bit is changing, dash 1, 0. Yes, it's been done. Next, this is because 2 you compared with all this so this has been done this is the new group now 5 it's 7 5 minus 7 it is minus 2 yes it is possible the middle bit is changing 1 dash 1 yes we compared with 7 next 6 minus 7 it is minus 1 it is possible 1 1 last bit is changing yes this is the content these are the three resultant group we got. Now, we need to compare with this. The last bit is dash. There is no last bit dash. Further, you can't continue. Middle bit dash. There is no middle bit dash. You can't continue. So, first bit dash. There is no first bit dash here. So, you can't. First bit dash. So, this itself is the final one. Now, list out all the essential prime implicants. Now, all these are essential because all these are been ticked. What are these essential? So, A bar, B bar, C. A bar, C bar. So, the, like that, you list out all the essential prime implicants. Sorry, A bar, B bar, C is not there because dash, right? A bar, B bar, that is 0, 1. So, 0, 2, that is A bar, C bar. So, B bar, C, B bar, C, B, C bar. Then, A, C, A, B. We list out all these are the essential prime implicants. Then start with the prime implicant chart. What are all these covers? So this covers these two variables. Sorry, these two main terms. It covers these two. It covers these two. It's been written now. Now scan through the columns. Single cross mark. That is the essential, right? So when I scan through this, there is no single cross mark. You also know. You also know. No, no, no. There is no single cross marks means there is no essential prime implicants. Now, how I go with this? I can do these two. Choose this in order to cover zero, right? So I can choose this A bar, B bar. So then this term will cover this. And even I need not to go with this, right? Then what is left out one has been covered so i i need not to go with this also then two two when i go if i choose this it covers only two. instead i go with some other so it covers multiple so five 
if I go with this, it covers only this because already this has been covered. So I don't choose these two, suppose. Next, if I go with this, it covers two. Yes, it's good. So I will choose this BC bar. So if it is covering this, it's been done these things, right? Now, uh, what's left out here? Five. In order to cover five, I have two terms. So if I, instead of going with this, I can go with this. So it covers two. So this, now all these things are being done now. So what is the solution? A bar, B bar, plus B, C bar plus AC. This is one solution. Now, I'll just, with the same problem, I'll just show you the other solution. Okay, you can just make a note of this. A, a bar B bar plus BC bar plus AC is the first solution. I'll just discard all these contents and I will rewrite again with the next. Okay. Now, what do we do? That is one solution. Instead of going with this, can't I go with this? Yes, of course you can go with this. Choose this. So, choose this as a prime implicant. Sorry. This is required element. So, if I choose this, it covers this not required. It covers this not required. Then now, in order to choose for this one, I can go with this. Instead of going with this, I can go with this. So, choose this. So, it's been done. It's been done. And now, what is left out here? 6 and 7. If I go with this, it covers both. Right? So, I'll go like this. So, this has been cancelled. Now, these three. So, earlier we found one solution. Now, we find another solution. So, like that. This was one of the solution we find it before a bar b bar plus b c bar plus a c. Now we find the next solution as sorry, yes, a bar c bar plus b bar c plus a b. So now, like this, we find two different solutions for this problem, but. Now we just move on to the next because this was very less numbers. So we took so much time to choose this. Suppose if it's a bigger problem, then how we go with it? So for that, the best solution is the Petrick method. Even though it, here it looks little more steps, but it can be easily implemented. So this we start with. So list out all these prime implicants do the cross marks now name all these terms as p1 p2 p3 p4 p5 6 now i need to list out all because there is no essential prime implicants in this so list out p in that p so what are all the terms it covers zero is this p1 plus p2 i can choose any of this either p1 or p2 that's why i am doing here an or operation okay so this is the one. So P is equal to, sorry. P is equal to P1 plus P2 in order to cover for 0. And for 1 it is P1 plus P3. Either P1 or P3. P1 or P3. And for 2 it is P2 or P4. And for 5, it is P3, P5, 5. So for 6, P5, sorry, P4, P6. For 6, it is P5, for P4 or P6. For 7, it is P5 or P6. Like that, you list out for all these main terms, what and all it can be used. So now it covers all the main terms. The result here is 1. Now we need to multiply this and use the simple Boolean algebra functions so that to simplify this further. So here we'll be using the distributive law. So you multiply these things like already I've discussed this in the previous video. 
ये प्लस बी एंड ये प्लस सी इट कैन बी रिटर्न एस ये प्लस बी सी दैट्स व्हाट वेन रिटर्न सो बाय डूइंग दिस टू ग्रुपिंग नाउ दिस पी टू पी फोर यू जस्ट गो विथ दिस पी फोर पी सिक्स सो नाउ पी फोर इज कॉमन ये राइट ये इस पी फोर पी फोर प्लस पी टू पी सिक्स देन टू विथ दिस टू सो पी फाइव plus p3 p6 so one step is been done now further you multiply these things p1 and p4 plus p1 p2 p6 plus p2 p3 p4 plus p2 p3 this p2 p2 is repeated so only once you write it p2 p3 p6 you multiplied these two and you got this as a result and you rewrite this as it is then you the second step you multiply these terms with this so and then you got these terms so once you get these terms now we need to find out is there any other method so in order to simplify any other boolean algebra we can make use here so in order to simplify this yes you can use this x plus x y wherever you find these type of terms x plus x y so is equal to x to eliminate the redundant terms of p so you need to use this so apply this and find out what is the least minimum possible so now there is no repeated terms here if it is any repeated terms a plus b a you can write it as a so there is no repeated terms you can write this so p1 p4 p5 as it is p1 2 5 6 also you write it so 2 3 4 5 also there is no terms for this you write down this now if you look into this 2 3 6 you are also it's repeated 2 3 6 you are also it is repeated 2 3 6 you are also it's repeated so i can make all these in one group so what i can do is out of these four take p p2 p3 p6 common p2 p3 p6 common in this so 1 1 plus your 4 plus 1 p1 1 plus p4 plus p1 plus p5 1 plus anything is 1 right that is what the formula here x plus xy is equal to x take x common 1 plus y is equal to x sorry 1 plus y is equal to 1 1 into x is x like that p2 p3 sorry p2 p3 p6 common out of these four terms you'll be getting 1 plus 4 p1 p4 plus p1 plus p5 so that is 1 so we write this this is the simplified expression of this p so once we find the simplified so now need to look into each of this how many p terms in each of this so in this there are three terms so this is the smaller one so here four terms four terms four terms here it is three terms so this is the smaller one so these two are having three terms so already we know all these terms are of two variables so here three terms total together six variables so 2 plus 2 plus 2 so these are the two best solution the number of solutions possible here is 1 2 3 4 5 5 five different solutions possible for this problem out of that two are the best solutions which we have already written these are the two best solutions so here it, you might feel that this method was much easier compared to this but this petrick method is easily converted into or it can be programmed whenever the problem does not yields multiple essential prime implicants like multiple options to choose at that time the petrick method is the best method to find the solution for any given problem so next these are the like summary things you can just go through with these things so what are all the steps we followed so far it's been given here in the form of a steps thank you